Hi, it's Jo here from Minerva. I'm going to be showing you some shirt skills on our next few tutorials, especially if you've been sewing tops with a scoop neck or round neck and you haven't put a collar on at all yet or um, attempting a placket. So we're going to have a go at some of those things that will help you move your pattern choice to the next level. Today I'm wearing a, a grandad collar shirt. So this is where you just use the collar stand so you don't get like the full collar. Um, the pattern is off here. It's uh, actually a shirt dress, but I altered it to make a shirt. So I've made a view D, which has got the grandad collar, the pockets, and then I altered the waist and made my own length. Great pattern generally. You don't often see patterns that have a jersey, two jersey and two woven items in the same pattern. So it's a really good value on that. You get the shirt dress, a t-shirt overdress and uh, a dress that you could make in scuba or really casually with jersey. Depending on which view you're making here will depend on your fabric choice and what you sort of want the overall shirt to feel like. So if you're making the dress, you can go for quite a heavy cotton, something that's um, not going to need lining or see through. But you could go something quite light canvas there or um, that's got a little bit of texture. Linen ones look good as well. V-shirt ones, you could choose a cotton or a chambray look great for a tunic. And these crop ones, they look good in a lawn, so they're slightly lighter and they've got that summer feel because they're shorter. I've chosen an embroidered anglais. So I've decided I've made so many pattern tops and pattern bottoms that I actually need some items to wear with those things. So I've chosen a white embroidered anglais. This does come in four colours actually, so you could choose different colours. It's quite easy to work with, it's not too thick. It is a, a light summer fabric, you know, this is going to be slightly sheer. But I think if I'm wearing it for summer, um, I can wear white underwear and that will be absolutely fine. So that's what I'm going to work with today. Okay, these are the parts of the collar that you need for the Carly shirt dress. There is a top collar. There's one of those cut. There's an under collar. There's one of those cut. And there's two collar stands and they go below the collar. So they help the collar to stand up. I've cut one out in plain white so that you can see when I'm working um, which is which. You, they're all on the fold. So you need to make sure that when you cut them, you cut them on the fold. And there are some markings to make, which is really, really important because sometimes on a collar, you need to ease it into the space. You need to make sure that you match up the edges to the right place so that your button band will lie flat. So whether that's a men's shirt or a women's shirt, that's really important that you add all the notches so that these collars go together properly. And I'm using a really lightweight one. If people haven't made a collar before, they sometimes choose an interfacing that's too strong and then they end up with a sort of business suit collar, um, which is not comfortable if you're wearing it as a casual shirt and you just want the collar to roll over so i'm going to apply this lightweight interfacing to the reverse pieces of this i'm trying to mark with pins which is the reverse sometimes i use safety pins just to say i need to stick the interfacing on this side and not on my good side The way I'm showing you now isn't the only way to add a colour, um, there are lots of different ways, so there's different techniques, sometimes you will make um, a colour with a stand included in the piece, sometimes you'll have it in two parts like we've got today, sometimes you will um, put it together in a different order depending on the pattern. This one is the instructions for the Kali shirt dress, so um, this isn't the same as everything and it's not the one and only way. The first thing you need to do is to attach the collar stand to the cut to the collar edge. And the thing that you need to make sure of here, and it sort of doesn't look quite right really, is you will your collar stand will stick out over the edge of your button band because you need to allow for the 1.5 seam allowance to 
sew all the layers together so if you imagine that's sticking out at the moment and it looks very much in the wrong place but when that's been sewn then you will have that continuous line it's quite tempting to not follow the instructions and put the end of the collar to the end of the button band but that's not right you need to allow for your seam allowances in other areas when you're pinning it on you you might feel it's a little bit lumpy and bumpy but you are easing that collar in so when it's sewn and it's at full tension you take out all of those little hillocks and little bumps and scrapes but that's why you need to use lots and lots of pins don't worry about using lots of pins because as soon as you find one little bump in one place then you'll need to put two more in there to stop that little bump so you've got to keep easing the material in because when you look i'm trying to get that piece into that neck hole space Next stage is to pin the under collar to the upper collar and you might find you know you cut it out really carefully but you still get a tiny little anomaly there so I think this is going to be the focal point of your shirt where those two collars come to meet like this so this is where I'm really careful about my seam allowances and I use my seam gauge and I make sure that I draw on my seam allowances and I'll tack it because I want to make sure that the points I have a really consistent pivot point so if I'm pivoting there on one side and a little bit less than the 1.5 on the other side then my collar points won't look the same so I'm really going to draw on here the shape of the collar really that's what's going to happen when I when I put the seam allowance on I'm really drawing this point here that I would like to pivot at so that I get exactly the same pivot point on this side I'm going to sew around and then you layer the collar which means you layer the seam so you haven't got so much bulk folded inside the collar so you will sew around the outside um, from here out and then you leave this side open the short side open because that's the piece that's going to attach to the shirt lay the seam if you've got um collars that are more clip uh, curved then you might need to clip the curves and you will definitely need to take these points off to try and make sure that you can get a really really crisp point and i'm going to show you how to get a crisp point on the end of your collars as well so the last bit of the collar treatment before we apply it to the shirt is to trim out some of the seam allowance that's called layering the seam and you take off half of the width of the one that has the interfacing on because that's the one providing the most bulk you're going to cut the corners off and then you're going to cut them into an arrow head just to take some of this seam allowance here off the side and then when you're ready to turn out you can use the corner of your seam gauge which is for turning out the corners on pointed pieces of clothing or corners of pockets and then you will press that ready to go onto your shirt the next part is to add that lovely pressed collar that you've just made right sides together with the interfacing side facing me i'm going to pin the collar to the stand so you can see there we've got the top the stand the collar i'm going to keep the seam allowances all the way through so that each part we put on fits the next part the last piece of collar is the final collar stand piece and that's going to go on top and make a full sandwich so we've got the shirt the collar stand the collar all made and then this last piece of sandwich which is the collar stand and now you'll see why that collar stand was sticking out over the end
because that's where we're going to have the seam allowance on that end. So I'm going to pin that on and then we're going to sew all the way around the edge. Just before I sewed, I decided to do the same little trick that I did with the upper collar, which is to draw on my seam line so that I could definitely be sure that I was keeping that curve shape. So I've pinned it on, I've turned up the seam allowance and now it's matching the back and I'm going to sew around there and along and I've marked the same on the other end so that I definitely know that curve is going to have the same seam allowance all the way along. The Cali shirt dress has a hem band facing and that's because it has a high low hem. So this is the front hem and this is the back hem. So this hangs down lower than this. And because it's got a really curved edge, you need a hem band facing to um, finish the edge of the hem because you can't you can't turn a hem very well on such a sharp curve. So you'll also see hem band facings on a scalloped edge top where you can't hem the end so there'll be that that will have a hem band facing you also get hem band facings on the inside of jackets so if you've got a line jacket it'll have a hem band facing and then the lining will be attached to that you, you also get it where um, you will, might see inside the hem so if you've got a dress that um, hangs down slightly at the back or has got a curve at the back and you will see it through your ankles you might have a hem band facing there as well I've um, sewn the side seams and um, I've matched it to the dot because this dot mark here is really important because there's a dot mark on the actual shirt as well and that will mean that this will exactly match up you must 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 make your seam allowances the same on your hem band facing as on your top. You finish the hem facing so that you've got either an overlocked edge or a zigzag edge. You can turn this outside edge over just by a tiny bit, but because I've got a summer weight fabric, I want it to lie quite flat. Pin it together, then you sew all the way around and then you need to clip the seams to turn it the right side out. Just want to show you this it's not a good thing to see but i want to show you that it might happen to you so when i turned it right side out just to check i'm getting quite a kink in that corner and it's not lying flat so what i need to do is flip it back out and i'm going to need to just clip into those seams there there was a clip stage earlier on which i did but i obviously didn't quite go close enough so to stop all that puckering i'm going to just clip the corners Okay, so I've turned it out and I've sorted out this little corner. I just needed to snip it in a little bit more and I've graded the seam so that I've not got any bulk on those curves. I was, I'm going to clip them, but I did just take off the overlock because I was getting a bit of bulk from where I'd overlock the edges. And I've pink and shared round because when I turn it out, I'll be sewing it down anyway, so that will all be enclosed. There we are, all the collar on, sitting nicely. If it was done up and the stands were together, you'd have two collars, the same length, same angle. You've got the button band on the front with the buttons attached. And just so that I can show you, the hem facing is giving that really cut out shape with the high low hem around the bottom. I hope that's helped you to move your shirt skills on a little bit especially if you've been making tops with just a round neck facing and you've steered clear of anything with a collar or a button band but actually if you've got some of these skills you can make a men's shirt you can make shirt dresses um, you can move into rugby shirts or polo shirts or things that have a placket on the front so hopefully i've helped you build up some new skills that you can use when you next use a pattern Thanks for watching. I hope that's been a little bit of inspiration for you, helped you move your sewing journey onto the next level. There are some shirt patterns below, um, which you might like to investigate.
but do join the sewing community at Minerva and see other people's makes. Be inspired to have a go at something yourself and of course post your own makes when you film them. Thank you.